You're about to open a window into the life of a ghost hunter. We'll show you dark, creepy roads that fade into the night. We'll show you haunted places, but most importantly, we'll show you what happens along the way there. Hi everybody, I'm Jeff. And I'm Linda. And we're here at the New Kent Providence Forge Loves getting some Arby's. Yeah. Heading out on the road. Yeah. Uh, this weekend, we're heading all the way up to Scranton, Pennsylvania, where we're looking forward to doing an investigation up there, um, but we're also looking forward to bringing back Paranormal Shakedown. Right. So we're looking forward, there's a cold case that we're going to be looking into yes. and hit some key locations while we're up there. Mm -hmm. So we're looking forward to getting on the road and and see what's going on. Yeah, it's going to be a fascinating case too. Very fascinating. We've been doing research on it for a couple of days now and it's just, you know, so many different facets to this case. It's really kind of cool. Absolutely. Absolutely, it really is. But let's take a look at this buffalo chicken sandwich. See if it's looking any different today than it has in the past. <laughs> Here it is. The Arby's Buffalo Chicken Sandwich. And I like how these are always covered in sauce. Um, it's not the best chicken patty I've had. No. But good nonetheless. And the bun looks nice and soft and fresh. It is. You know? It um, is. My gyro looks a little bit different. I think it has a little bit less lettuce than it usually does. Oh. But um, I always get the Greek meat. I know it's not really truly Greek or anything, but it's still really good. So I'm looking forward to it. So what we have here are the jalapeno poppers. And these are the kind that have the cream cheese down inside there. But the really great thing is the bronco berry sauce. This stuff is amazing. It's like spicy and sweet at the same time. And I could probably just like drink this by itself pretty much. It's that good. Oh, there it is. Mm. Mm. It's like syrup. Mm. I bet it would be good on ice cream. Maybe. Mm hmm Because it is very sweet. Mm -hmm. Sort of gelatinous. So one thing to mention, uh, as we're on the road here, there's a little bit of snow up here in this part of Virginia, just past just got on 95, so we're not even in like the northernmost part of Virginia yet. Yeah. And up there in Scranton, I know there's a, a good deal of snow. Right, yes. And we always get the question, and I always, in fact, I was given a tour in Yorktown just this past weekend, and someone asked a question, uh, is activity heightened and when it's warmer or when it's colder? Uh, like, when yeah. do you notice more activity? Yeah. And one thing I like to do is investigations in various climates. Right. I like to do investigations in the summer, in the winter, just to kind of compare, just yeah. to see if, if and especially at the same place. Yeah. Because there's a place back there in Diggs, Virginia, called mm -hmm. Old House Woods. And we would typically go out there year round. Like for a while, what, would, what we would do is every other week, we would go out to Old House Woods through the winter, through the summer, all the time. Huh. So we had a, a place to compare, to kind of see right. if the activity was heightened in the summer or in the winter. Yeah. Now I will say, I've had some things happen in the summer, some things that were paranormal right. at Old House Woods, but the majority of the things that happened were in the winter. Huh. The majority of the things were in the colder months of the winter. Right. Uh, after around Christmas, just before Christmas, and then like the month after Christmas. Well, I mean, they do say that the veil is thinnest between the 
world of the living and the world of the dead right around Christmas time for some reason. But that also kind of goes along with my theory about static, that perhaps the cold, drier air in the winter um, helps the spirits to, I guess, manifest or helps them to uh, cause more activity to occur. Absolutely. I think there's something to that. Yeah. I will say, too, uh, what's interesting is this time of year where we're going when we're going up to Scranton here uh -huh. uh, one of the cases we're looking into it was it's just past the anniversary of that so it happened right in the winter months so not only is it very close to the anniversary of it yes but it's also cold that's when right we seem to get the most activity yeah perhaps that means we'll get some activity absolutely we're investigating Plus, I'm looking forward to some snow because we don't get to see it down here. So Yeah, not much. I think I'm going to go roll around in it when we first get there. And, uh, <laughs> it'll be a good time. Yeah. All right. Here at the Wawa. Did yes. you see this? I did. Unfortunately, it was closed or else I would have had some. Cinnamon bun coffee. I know. That looks really good. I've never seen that before at a Warm Wawa. vanilla caramel and cinnamon. Oh. Mm, that does look oh. pretty good. Yeah, that sounds good. Really I think I'm going to go for the decaf. So just kidding about the whole decaf thing. Don't unsubscribe yet <laughs> because there is caffeine in my coffee. Right. And for those of you that like decaf and just drink it for the taste, we love you too. We do. Nobody drinks decaf just for the taste. What's the purpose of it then? What, decaf? Yeah. Because cause sometimes caffeine like messes with people's like hearts and nervous systems and I think it's more of a health thing. Right. So, you if, you're drink so if you're drinking it and it doesn't have caffeine, you're drinking it for the taste. Well, I suppose. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I think you're drinking it just because you can't drink the caffeine. Okay, so if, like, I'm the kind of person that if I could have, if I had to stop drinking caffeine, okay, for one, I'd probably die because I'd keep drinking it. But <laughs> if I had right. it for some unforeseen <laughs> reason, stop drinking caffeine, which I know people do, I would probably you're still drink the still decaf. Drinking it. Just for the, you're saying just for the flavor of Just for, because a nice warm cup of coffee, the flavor, I like how it tastes. I'm used to drinking coffee, so yeah. I would drink the decaf. But if you can have caffeine and you drink decaf, then I think you're drinking it for the taste. Because there's no other yeah. health benefits. There's yeah, no other. I don't know. People, people that drink decaf, when they can actually drink the caffeine, like something's wrong there. I don't know about that. Like, something's got to be wrong, because why wouldn't you just drink the, the, the good stuff? You know what I mean? Because let's say, for example, like, I was concerned about not having to stay up too late. Like, I'm, I'm, I never care if I'm up late, right? But some people might want to get to bed at a reasonable time. True. And they might want a cup of coffee after dinner. Yeah. So they go for the decaf. But once again, I think it's because they like the flavor. Could be. Could be. I would just drink tea. But then that's just me. I don't know. know if tea has enough substance for me. <laughs> I saw a shirt. You could do I like saw this shirt. It said, I like my coffee black uh -huh. and my tea in the harbor. You could do like the, the British do and put like milk in your tea. That would give it some substance. I can't get with that. I, just, <laughs> I can't do that. I've never tried it. I would like to try it sometime. I've heard it's pretty good. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> So we're driving around the outskirts of Washington, D.C. right now, and it brings to mind something that, uh, that I'm pressing for. Now, I want to see VAPI in the White House, okay? If I have to run for president to get in there, <laughs> I will. The only problem with that is I don't want to have to wait four years right. to get in there because we need to do a paranormal investigation of the White House. Yes. I want to find out if the stories about the White House are true, if there's any evidence of paranormal activity there, I want to do an investigation. Absolutely. What are some of the things uh, about the White House, some of the ghost stories? Uh, there's actually a huge number of ghost stories about the White House. Um, evidently, there's quite a few different spirits that haunt the place. 
um, one of which is a British soldier that was killed in the War of 1812, who supposedly walks the grounds holding a torch. Hmm. And there's not a lot of um, detail given about the story, but he's been seen on a number of occasions. And um, the other story that I find the most interesting was the story of Anna Surratt. Now, Mary Surratt was the only woman that's ever been hanged by the U.S. government, that's ever been executed. She was the first one, yeah. She was. And, and that was, uh, she was one of the conspirators. Yes, yeah, she was convicted, well, she was convicted of being a conspirator. I'm not exactly sure that it, she, there was solid evidence against her. But she was convicted of it, she was hanged. But on the morning of her hanging, which was July 7th, 1865, her daughter Anna, um, in a last ditch effort to save her mother's life, went to the front steps of the White House and waited for Andrew Johnson to arrive. And Andrew Johnson was uh, the new president at the time. She was hoping to plead with him um, to release her mother. Now, to this day, on July 7th, supposedly, you can hear Anna Surratt banging on the front doors of the White House and pacing back and forth, um, hoping to get his attention. I suppose. Mm. So, um, and they said even with the doors closed, you can hear her wailing and her screaming and her hollering, um, echoing through the front entrance hall to the White House. So that's a pretty cool one. Uh, yeah. One of the lesser known ones by far. Um, some of the other ones that are more well known include um, Lincoln. Evidently, Lincoln um, used the Lincoln bedroom, uh, they called it, not as a bedroom, but as an office. And he's been heard and seen in that room a number of times. Um, so many times, in fact, that some people who occupied the White House refused to go in there and actually sleep. Um, some of the children or the daughters of the uh, recent presidents kind of would dare each other to go in there and spend the night. Um, some of them actually woke, awakened to be able to see him standing at the window staring out. Uh. Um, even, uh, Rev, even Ronald Reagan's dog, Rex, uh, for some reason would stand there and bark at that door and refuse to go in that room. Hmm. Now, interesting enough, too, um, it, you have to consider the fact that uh, this, this White House was going on during the whole spiritualism movement. And when um, Abraham Lincoln's son died, Willie, Willie died in the White House while they were actually occupying it. And Willie's ghost has been seen in the White House. But this prompted his wife, Mary Todd Lincoln, to start holding seances in the Red Room of the White House. So they were holding seances trying to contact the spirit of her dead son, uh, there's also been Ouija boards used in the White House as well. Really? Yeah. Oh, so, um, you know, this could have opened a portal to something much darker than, um, you know. Yeah. And I think Mary Todd Lincoln saw some ghosts at the White House, too, didn't she? See she some did. Everybody's things? seen ghosts. Evidently, the yeah. Bushes, George Bush, um, everybody that stayed there has, has seen and heard these ghosts. And, um, you know, the, the White House staff will tell you all about them. They say, oh, yeah, we hear right. that all the time. So. Something. so we need to get in there. I've we contacted do. them a couple times, contacted the White House directly and the White House Visitor Center and even contacted our congresswoman, Right. Uh, put a message out to her. No one has said no yet. No. I will say that much. No one has said no. No, they just don't know who to refer you to they might that, not that has the authority they to say yes. They don't typically get that question. Yeah. Right, right. But I think the voices of the American people need to be heard. They do. We need to get VAPI in the White House. That's right. All right. So uh, send some messages to them. If you know anybody, got any connections, Yeah. tell them about us. Be like, hey, these guys, uh, you know, that they can find if there's ghosts there. They can take care of any leftover food that you might have right. while they're there. You know, if, if you know anybody, uh, yeah, put but a good word in for us. I bet the White House has good coffee. I don't, see really them, I don't know about that. I don't see them having better coffee than Wawa. I don't know. I, I really, I think that they would have like, you know, some excellent gourmet coffee bean kind of stuff. And I'm, I'm all up for that. I'm trying I to, like the gourmet I'm stuff. trying to have some coffee. I prefer the Wawa. <laughs> but hey, we'll see what happens. We're yeah. going to keep trying. And it's one of our goals to get an investigation in the White House. Yeah, I want to sleep in the Lincoln bedroom. I got dibs. Just give me a couple hours at least. I, I would sleep in like a bedroom, but at least a couple hours in the White House. I'm sure they're not going to be like, oh, yeah, come in, spend the night, run cameras, all this stuff. 
Just let us go into a few EVP sessions, you yeah. know. Yeah. Nothing too hardcore. Yeah. Let's see. So we made it up here to Pennsylvania mm -hmm. and we're just north of Gettysburg yep. at a place that you will only find in Pennsylvania. So this That's is pretty right. cool because this is a unique place that we get to highlight here. Yeah. Place called Rudders. Rudders. Get ready for a treat. Here we go. Oh, and we don't even have to touch the doors. I'm liking that. Hands-free entry. <laughs> I know. Right? That's don't even need to use the 2020 key. Yep. Look at this at place. <laughs> oh man, a plethora of chips. <laughs> I wonder, would they have the hottest chip on earth? I doubt it. I somehow doubt it. I don't know. It's worth looking for, I guess, though. But I will tell you something that's really cool. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. We've got to check out the sunflower seed selection. Oh, yeah. Cheeseburger. Sweet and spicy? I wonder what sweet and spicy is. See, they're sweet and spicy, but the thing is, they're David's. Uh -huh. I'm not a David's like fan. I like Biggs. I do like Biggs. Every kind you could ever want. This is like the meat stick heaven. Yes, this is a lot of meat Look sticks. Look at those things. They're so big. Look at that. That's ridiculous. Wow. Yeah, that's quite wow. a meat stick. I've never seen so many meat sticks. No, me neither. Or I've never seen Martin's white cheddar popcorn or Martin's cheese curls baked white cheddar. Those might have to come to the hotel with me tonight. We got a pretzel band, a pretzel brand that I haven't seen before. It's called Wedge of Hanover. Yeah, now I've had Snyder's of Hanover, huh. and Hanover is right down the road. Bless you. Thank but you. look at these, sourdough broken pretzels. Oh, that's pretty neat. Yeah. So they take all of their crappy broken pretzels out of the factory throw and just them throw them in a bag. And so yeah, there I you have it. I could see that. But it's good. Probably is good. We are kind of in pretzel country here. They know how to make some pretzels that's up right. around Hanover. Pennsylvania is pretzel country. They really do, and potato chips. So what's the pretzel shells that I see over here? Explain this to me. I'm not familiar with the pretzel shells. It's only the outside. They've hollowed them out. How do they do that? I don't know. But they've got craft And what do they do with the pretzels. inside? Look at this stuff. Man, yeah, this is some unique stuff here. Extra salt, extra dark. There's that wedge down there again, too. I know. That's pretty neat. So it's also kind of like a Luffs because they've also got a lot of other stuff over here, too. Yeah, like travel the, stuff? Yeah, travel kind of stuff and book bags and like... Yeah, and I even saw CB radios up over there. Look at this cute little tactical bag. Oh, like that is quite the a... The single shoulder sling there. Quite an equipment bag there. Yeah, look, you could put all... Look, bullets fit down inside here, mm -hmm. right here. Bullets, oh. EMF detectors, <laughs> everything you need for hunting ghosts. Right. Right there. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I kind of like that. Milk. Yep, this is what I'm recommending because Rudders has their their own dairy peanut butter milk, right? chocolate peanut butter milk. Ooh. Oh man! Oh, that's interesting. I have never seen that before. Yeah, I'm not sure I'm trying that. But I'm it not usually a big milk drinker, but I know. Man, I like milk on cereal and I like milk after I eat something chocolate, but on the road, I'm not so sure about that. I also see all kinds of teas in here, though. Yes, too. and this is what I was getting ready to recommend, is some Rudder's iced tea. Rudder's Ooh. makes a mean iced tea. I will tell you, some good stuff. Brew, sweet tea. Yeah, a plethora, for sweet sure. Tea. All right, so pretty cool stop off here at Rudder's. Yeah. Got some snacks. Gonna try some of those pretzel pieces that we talked about. Yep, some, some white, white cheddar, cheddar cheese, cheese curls. curls and yep. Some of their iced tea, so. Yeah looking forward to that yeah that as would be we, cool yeah yep yeah, as we get back on the road mm -hmm. scranton pennsylvania
Okay, so mirrors all around in this elevator. Yeah. So I don't feel as claustrophobic <laughs> as I do sometimes in elevators. I feel like it's big, open. Right. But one thing I gotta say about the Comfort Inn is the quickest check-in ever. That was the quickest check-in Came in, ever. sign here, yeah. and let's Here's see what these key. rooms look like compared to the sleep in. Left. All right. And here we are. A room with two beds. So once again, I can jump from bed to bed. That's right. Right? We can throw all our crap on one bed, sleep on the other, you yeah. know, eat on one. Right. Because we did stop by Sheets real quick, made a quick we pit did. stop. We did. As soon as we got into Clark Summit, yeah. there's a Sheets. And look at that. Old pictures on the wall. Perhaps of uh, Scranton. We'll have to take a closer look at those. Oh, locomotives. Later on. Let's see locomotives. So that's the view from our hotel room window, a snow-covered Clark Summit. And it's beautiful looking out, seeing the mountains going up, the roads going up into the mountains, and just all this snow. And I imagine it's like this all winter around here. So today we're going to kick off with getting some breakfast. And this is cool because I know a lot of breakfast places in this area. And my first choice is temporarily closed, unfortunately. So we're gonna head down uh, to a little place in Scranton called the Glider Diner, and we're gonna get some breakfast down there. Then, while we're at breakfast, we're gonna kinda map out our day because for the Paranormal Shakedown, there are quite a few different sites that we need to hit. There are some interviews that need to be done. So we're gonna kinda map out that day, and then on top of that, we also have our investigation, our residential investigation. I'm gonna go from there. But right now, I'm looking forward to tearing into some breakfast. What say you, Linda? I am really, really hungry, and I think that would be great. I hope they have some sort of like potatoes. Gotta have potatoes. This place is an original diner mm -hmm. from back in the 1950s, maybe even a little before that. Yeah. I'm not sure about this one. Um, what is on TV, yo? I have no idea. Okay. It's Armageddon, isn't that the Thing where they it's just weird the because there's like there's like people making out behind us. I'm I'm looking in the yeah. See, look at look at the oh, screen here. No, see, it's Liv Tyler and Ben Affleck. Oh, it's okay. There's the best Batman since Adam West and Michael <laughs> Keaton. I'm just gonna throw that out there. Get some more haters. <laughs> but nonetheless, it is gonna be pretty good. Let me turn this way because that thing's throwing me off. Whenever I see something like that, it's like flashing Skin. in the background. No, just like, he sees skin. I see a big screen right there. It's just like... Yeah, like skin, yeah. skin, skin. No, it's just a, it's a screen, <laughs> screen, screen. Like, even now, it's throwing me off because it's... Yeah. You know. Uh -huh. But nonetheless. Yeah. Um, like I said, it's, it's an original diner, so it's going to be unique. It's not going to be something... It's a one-of-a-kind place. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's not one of those restaurants that you can find anywhere. Right. And, and that's, that's awesome because those are the places they've survived all the years because of a reason. And the reason is because their food is usually amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. That's absolutely right. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, and then we're going to get some of the best pizza in the world. Um, once again... Not the best pizza in the world, but a close second, perhaps. Yeah. I don't know. I might have to get the best later on, but they're only available for takeout. But I don't think I can come all the way up here without getting them later on. Well, you've never had New York pizza, right? See, I've had New York pizza, and I was not impressed. Yeah, I've had New York pizza. Have you? Okay, mm -hmm. I was not impressed at all. Yeah. You've never been in New York, though. New York no, State. but there's... there's We're very close to New York right now. There's a guy over here on Lackawanna Avenue, Bawanas and he makes a New York style pizza. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, see, I was never very impressed with it. But I have to say the pizza that I've had here, like around Scranton, um, is like the, the crust is different. The crust is a little thicker, I mm -hmm. think, than New York pizza. Nor New York pizza where I've had, it's like very thin in the very center. Yeah, if you're talking about it's Alfredo's like and thin. brownies, yeah. it's, it's a oh, thicker oh, pizza. Alfredo's. Yeah. Oh, God, yeah. that's some so good it, stuff. So it is good yeah. stuff, and, and the cheese is yeah. amazing. It is. There's a TV throwing me off again. I see all these it lights is, yeah. flashing and stuff. Yeah. All right, let's get on the road here. <laughs> Do you have the phone right here? No. 
So a pretty cool place, huh? It is a pretty cool place. It's very, very retro. I mean, still like the original. Like, look at these windows. I mean, you don't find curved windows anymore. Yeah. You know? It's like and stepping with, back in the time. Yeah, with the aluminum trim and everything. That's really cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It is. All right, so perusing the breakfast menu here. Looking pretty good, a lot of yeah. options. Take a look at the back. Pretty cool picture at night. Look at it all lit up like that. That's really cool. That's pretty cool. So the coffee is, I'd venture to say, piping hot. Yes, it certainly is, and it is good. Yeah. Even black. Yeah, it's a good, like, Diners have some of the best coffee. They really I think. do. Yeah, I don't know why they have the best the best coffee, but they really do. Yeah. They're like on the Waffle House level. Yeah. Waffle House is kind of like diner coffee. It is. Waffle House is definitely diner coffee. And, um, you know, I, I, I like a lot of different coffees, mind you, but, but something about the diner coffees, it's always really super hot. Um, the flavor is good. Maybe it's the mix, like they always make it just strong enough, but not too strong. That's important. You gotta. You can't make weak coffee. You can't do that. So, the food has arrived. Mm. Yours looks pretty good there. What'd you get? I got a farmer's omelet. Ooh, the farmer's omelet. Made me feel a little closer to home. But it's got like green peppers and ham and onion in it, and it's got cheese, and I'm kind of excited about it. It looks really big. It's three eggs. So it's actually quite, quite a bit bigger than I anticipated. But it looks amazing. It does look pretty good. Now what I want to try, look at these sausages. These are yeah. not normal breakfast sausages. Oh, those are my sausages there. I know. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that Put French, some scrambled eggs and home fries. Yeah, and look at this French toast. Oh, yeah. man. Look at that. That's making me hungry. I'm ready to eat. I haven't I'm had ready. French toast in a long time. Me neither. Mm. So you've sampled the omelet. I did, and it's really, really good. Oh, yeah. Very good. It's cheesy and light and fluffy. Mm. Mm. Definitely the glider diner if you're in Scranton. <laughs> good call. Good call. Mm -hmm. I'll have to go ahead and just kind of sample one of these sausages here. Take a little bite. kind of sausage does it taste like? Since it doesn't seem like Jimmy Dean, you know? I can't oh, describe yeah. this other than something that was crafted up in heaven and handed down to the glider diner. <laughs> Is it like a um, kielbasa kind of thing? Like a, like no, a like I was, I was expecting like the spicy type sausage, Yeah. but it's a very mild sausage. Huh. But it's kind of flavor that I would describe as buttery. Huh, that's strange. Yeah, it's very, very good. Sounds good. It is. Amazing. Now I gotta say these home fries, these potatoes are really good. They're like homemade. They're like they mm -hmm. mashed up the potatoes and put the ingredients in them. And mm -hmm. you can actually taste the potato, which is pretty amazing. You can. They don't really have any seasoning on them, I don't think, so I had to add some pepper, a little bit of salt. Yeah, so you did. Mine but, tasted uh, good, but kind of with the natural flavor. Yeah. I also have to make mention that this egg is very light and fluffy. Um, very good. I don't know how they get the scrambled eggs like this, because when I get them, they're a little more crisp. But these are perfectly cooked. They add just a little bit of milk in with them. Milk? Like famous chefs and stuff tell you don't ever add milk to your to your eggs and scramble it. But the, but the milk gives them that little bit of fluffiness. Hmm. I've never been a fan of famous chef food. No, I mean, no, it's too... All right. So now, the moment we've been waiting for, I'm going to cut into these French toasts here. Mm. And, uh... Oh, that looks amazing. Mm. That's some good French toast. So nice. I have to say, the glider diner was amazing. Yes, quite possibly the best place we've eaten breakfast at so far. I know, and there were a lot of things on the menu that I wanted to try, and I just didn't, you know, I had to pick one. Because right. the one that I ate was so filling, I couldn't have eaten anything else. Yeah, and they got a back door here. 
with a whole added section on. So it's a lot more than just in that old diner part. But I'd have to say, out of all the places we stopped at a gas grub and ghost, this was probably the best. Absolutely, breakfast. this was really, really good. Yeah, and that stuffed French to toast. If we ever make it up here again, I'm getting the stuffed French toast. It's got cream cheese in it. It's got like strawberries or something over the top. Oh. That's happening. To North Washington Avenue. Then the destination is on your right. So we're heading over to our first point of interest. And what we're gonna do is we wanna look at it during the day. We wanna get some pan overs and maybe even try a spirit box session right now during the day, uh, just to compare if we get any better responses during the day than we do at night. Now, what we're doing here uh, is gonna be on our next episode of Paranormal Shakedown. Yes. So we're pretty excited about this one. There's definitely some uh, interesting the factors. A lot of factors involved in this North case. Yep. And it looks like we've Arrived. got here, we've just got to find a place to park right. in the city to walk up and check this place out. So one thing to consider in the city is parking. Right. Uh, parallel parking is never a good option for me. But luckily, <laughs> right around the block, there's a parking garage. Yes, that worked out well. Now I'm walking up here. I got this REM pod in my pocket, right? Uh-huh. Got the spirit box, got the K2 meter, just in case, because like I said, we want to see what we can do during the daytime to kind right. of compare results. It's kind of weird though, walking around with this stuff because people are probably looking at me like I'm pregnant, <laughs> right? <laughs> but it's even going to be stranger when I start setting this thing up in the parking lot of a school admin building and pull the antenna up yeah and it's got all the lights on it and yeah. everything it's gonna yeah i'm gonna have a bomb squad after me or something yeah that's probably true i don't know uh which way do we go from here left all right just have to highlight this building looks like a masonic temple yeah but uh that's that's quite a place some architecture you see up here huh? yeah it really is it's amazing. It also doubles as a fallout shelter. Oh. Interesting. All right. Nice to know that's nearby. <laughs> yeah, it says Masonic Temple on the front, so that's uh, that's what it is. All right, so we finished up with our first stop, and uh, I got to say my hands are freezing. Yeah, it is really, really cold. It's, it's cold out here. Yeah. Yeah, and it's going to be colder tonight. I know. We probably could have picked a warmer weekend to do this but <laughs> maybe but it's so close to the 40th anniversary of his death it was just yeah. january 26th so and uh, you know that's we wanted to get as close as we could to the anniversary and that's right that's right all right let's get on the road to our next location perhaps find a bathroom at some point okay so we hit up a couple locations here and uh we're driving through snowy scranton time to stop for a sheets uh, some of the locations we were able to get to, one we weren't really able to get to just mm -hmm. because of lack of parking and the uh, impact of the cold on the distance of the walk would not be, not be good. But it's time to take a break and look for that beacon of light uh, that this time is going to be a beacon in the day, but still on a gray day like this, yes. a little red would be nice place we like to call sheets what are your thoughts so far well um i think you're right i think it would be nice to take a nice little break um i've kind of got to go pee so i think that would be a good thing um but it is very dreary out today lots of snow out here it's obvious that they've had a lot of snow uh over the past week or two and that it hasn't had a chance to melt off i mean there's like miniature snow mountains all over you know beside the roads and stuff so and that kind of lends to the difficulty in trying to find some place to park as well because there's a lot of places that look like you could get stuck if you attempted to park there that's true that's so true. you it's know it's very hilly it is and such as well lots very icy very icy and it looks like people have just basically cleared out the areas that they park in, sp in specifically and not any other space right so um, parking may be a little bit difficult, but we're going to try our best. And in the meantime, it's a, it's a sheets run. Yeah, it is. It is. 
And uh, as far as this case, like I said, it's uh, a cold case that we're looking into. Uh, go into some various locations that are associated with the case. And we're going to put this together, if you haven't seen before, Paranormal Shakedown. Yes. Uh, Paranormal Shakedown is a, it's a little series of videos that we haven't done any in a, in a couple of years here, mm -hmm. or at least a year, where we look at cold cases. In the beginning of the video, it basically gives you the backstory, tells you about the case, and then uh, it intertwines the paranormal investigation aspect. Yes. Going out, seeing if we can get any answers to these cases. So we're out here, we're asking questions that are specifically related to the to the murder, um, to the other deaths that were involved, the disappearances and such, and seeing what kind of answers we can get. Now I, I will say that I haven't noticed any significant responses come through the spirit box during the course of these investigations, mm -hmm. but that could all change once we review it. Yes. Um, because the speaker was kind of low because it we was. didn't want to, we're in the middle of a city, we didn't want to yeah. draw a bunch of attention to us. Yeah. Uh, so, likewise, it was kind of low to us. We kept it near the recorder, though, very well, so we'll be able to go back and, and, uh, and listen it. to it. Mm -hmm. So we're looking forward to doing that. But, sheets, here we are. What's happening in the sheets? So, um, I found some York peppermint patties, and uh, I love these. So I'm going to get some of these for maybe for later on tonight. I don't know, I might eat one now and save the rest for later on tonight. But I was thinking about late night snack foods, you know, because Sheets is always a good place to get some late night snack foods. Uh, they have a variety of different things. And being that we're in a Sheets in Scranton, up north, you find very different things up here than you do in, say, a Sheets down by Richmond. So it's worth looking around, seeing what kind of unique little things you can find. Uh, but the, the uh, good old faithful here. Yeah, York that's unique. Patties. That's unique. So I'm glad you came all the way to Scranton, Pennsylvania <laughs> to find some York peppermint patties. No, I'm patties. saying it, it's a nice place to find other things. <laughs> I'm not going to eat none of those Middlesworth chips that you like. Those <laughs> things are kind of nasty. I don't know. I kind of like them. Don't eat the Middlesworth chips. Like them. Go for good old faithful. <laughs> so we stopped here at the Cathedral Cemetery mm -hmm. in Scranton. And we're coming up here uh, just to pay tribute. Yes. Leave a flower on the... Uh, victim's grave of yes. the case that we've been looking into uh, and it's quite a sight the cemetery just covered in snow yeah uh, it really is it's such a peaceful place it is quiet it is yet such a sad place at the same time right and I too have family members that are buried up here in this graveyard uh, so it's just like I said it, on a winter day like this when it's so calm and it's so still yeah. There's like a serenity about it, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, there certainly is. And just kind of panning around, you can see the mountains off in the distance. Uh, it's a, I mean, it's a beautiful plot of land. It's a beautiful place to be laid to rest. And you can see how large this cemetery is. It's right. Huge. Absolutely. Well, definitely quite an afternoon yes. uh, since we left off at the Sheets. Yeah. Uh, we actually got to go and do an interview we did. Uh, with the daughter of the victim, mm -hmm. whose case we're looking into up here in Scranton. Uh, very great talking to her. It really was. was. Wonderful person. We're down here now in the Southside Shopping Center mm -hmm. because it's dinner time. We got another investigation that we're going to at this yeah. guy's house later on. Uh, but we're gonna get what I would say is possibly the second best pizza in the world, I don't because know. Brownies is, yeah. is closed down. <laughs> Alfredo's Pizza and Restaurant. Yes. So let's go in here and show you what this pizza looks like, uh, as it is. Words won't do it justice. No, I can say this for it's sure. A great place. Amazing. I think it's over here. Think so? Got some. Alfredo's attire here. All right. So we're sitting here in the same exact location, same table that we sat in the last time we were here, which was quite a while ago. I don't exactly remember when, but I mean, it was like a year or two ago, right? Yeah, it was yeah. a while. But we happen to be sat at the same table, which is a little bit funny. Um, they have Ghost Nation 
on TV, which is again a little bit funny for an Italian restaurant, you know. But um, still kind of cool because I don't think I've ever seen a Ghost Nation episode. But um, we're looking forward to it. They said it might be up to an hour. So we got fried asparagus that's served with some kind of blue treat cheese kind of dressing stuff. It sounds actually really good. And um, so, but we're anxiously awaiting the pizza because the pizzas here are so amazing. Very, very good. So the appetizer has arrived. This is fried asparagus. Yeah. I gotta say, it's looking pretty good right there. It does. It looks quite good, and I'm quite excited about it. It's got this sort of thing over top. Nothing, none of that looks like blue cheese, unless the cheese is actually maybe crumbled over top of it or something. Maybe. That's maybe it's guessing. stuffed with it. Yeah, but uh, we definitely have to try one of these. Yeah, go ahead and take a bite. I'm guessing it's going to be hot. Probably. I don't know. Is it hot to the touch? Not really. Mm. Yeah, let's take a look at the internal workings of that one if we can. It's kind of dark, but kind of see. Okay, it's asparagus. It is. Yeah, it is asparagus. I didn't bite any of the toppings, when, so I think I'm going to have to bite it again. Okay. Mm. There you go. Mm -hmm. ah, so the verdict is good on the it's fried asparagus. It has that typical, like, green flavor that asparagus has. Uh -huh. um, but then there must be some sort of, like, a lemon involved in the uh, toppings that's there. It's also very cheesy, and it may have a couple of other seasonings that I can't quite place, but it's quite good. Huh. Okay, well, I'm going to try one of these here myself. Take a little bite. Mmm. That's some good asparagus. I wasn't expecting it to still have the crunch. And it's still got the asparagus crunch, which I really like, which is pretty good. But it's not like the kind of asparagus, like sometimes when you steam it, it's like really hard to chew, really hard to bite through. This isn't. This is on point. This is some good asparagus. <laughs> the pizza has arrived, and it didn't take an hour. It no. really didn't. But it's uh, it's loaded down here with some toppings. Sure topics. is, yeah. That looks amazing. That looks it really good. It does, and this is the one kind of pizza that I could eat with just cheese. Just oh, cheese. Oh, yeah, definitely. I really could, without any toppings. I don't say that about a lot of pizzas. Mm -hmm. All right, so tear it into the pizza. Oh, yeah. Mm. Does it live up to the standard of last time? Absolutely. Now the crust is really thick, but it's not extremely doughy. It's kind of a light dough. And it's crunchy on the very bottom and on the edges. It's got a light crispiness to it. It's not soggy, which I absolutely love, the fact that it's crispy like that. But then the cheese is something else. It's like, it's gotta be like white American cheese or something very rich, because um, it, it's very, very flavorful. Not like a typical mozzarella or, you know. It's like a creamy cheese. It's very creamy, yeah. very creamy cheese. I'll take a little bite of this pizza here and see what it tastes like. Mmm. So we finished up a pretty good dinner, right? Yes. What would you say about the pizza here? Oh, it was amazing. It's just so rich and thick and it's, you know, just you can't eat nearly as much of it as you would like to. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You can't come to Scranton though and not get pizza. That's true. Gotta try it. Yeah. But we're back out on the cold streets here of the city. Yeah. And now we're going back to these locations that we're at during the day. Mm -hmm. uh, at least one or two of them. We're going you back at night Turn right to do a little street. bit of a nighttime investigation. Right. Compare results at night versus during the day. Yeah. And then uh, we're going to be heading over to our residential investigation. So it'll make for an eventful night, that's for sure. Yes, it will. And it's definitely, mm -hmm. it's 28 degrees and dropping. Yes. So, Oof. exciting. Uh, look at this. Because sometimes you just gotta stroke that misdiagnosis. That's <laughs> 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 uh, gonna generate some hate right there. It is, but that guy definitely looks like he's stroking something. He does. He he's, looks guilty. He's stroking misdiagnosis. Yeah. Uh. That guy looks creepy. Now here at the location, 
just want to kind of pan this around and show this. This is amazing. This is a pretty amazing thing right here. Look at this crane platform. 16 feet. Is that what we said? 30, 30, they're over 30. Wow. Jeez. And he's got every billboard car that I've like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> every one of them. I, yeah. I wish I did have all of them. There's, there's some that I've never seen before wow. that they made that I've been looking for. Morton Salt. Yeah, That's Kellogg, amazing. Domino Sugar. Wonder Bread. That was out when I was a little kid. That's my second one, that Wonder Bread car. Oh, yeah? When my parents had the fire in their bedroom when I was four, uh -huh. the lift-in key car that's up on the shelf back there, yeah. the Wonder Bread, and there was another car my father kept on his dresser while they melted oh, geez. from the heat. Look at the old house being torn down, the old building yeah, being torn down. Yeah, that's cool. That's pretty neat. That is really neat. Oh, you got the Schlitz's car. Yeah, yeah. A that's a classic car, right there. The Vlasic, the pickle car. Yep, I have the Heinz one. I do have the Heinz one. Yeah. Yep. This is amazing. Wow. That's pretty cool. I don't know. So we're heading along. Uh, 81? 81. Maybe. Something like that. Yeah, I think we are, 81. Mm -hmm. Back to the hotel. Yeah. Uh, we finished up the investigation, and it was pretty cool because this house, it was a, you know, we showed you a little look at the train platform that he had down in the basement, mm -hmm. which was awesome because I've always loved model trains. Oh, yeah. You know, I don't have room to set one up, but I have them. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> and I always have since I was a kid. And it is, he had a pretty cool setup down there. He did. You know, he really did. But this house, uh, it was built in 1898. So when Scranton was still fairly new, you know, this house was built. And it's been around for the duration of the time the city's been around. You know, a long time, if you mm -hmm. think about it. Yes. This house, he's seen several different spirits there. Uh, he saw a fireman coming up out of the basement and a woman or a girl. He said she was probably a teenager down in the basement mm -hmm. with the with the, like an old time white, gown. white nightgown yeah and he sees a lot of movement that goes around in his in his living room yes so we we hung out there we did some spirit box sessions mm -hmm. and some EVP sessions and uh, we'll have that wrapped together in a video for you so you can see the investigation um, <clears> unfortunately <throat> like I said I've been focusing the investigations on just running the camera for the investigation right Instead yeah. of trying to put some of the clips into into the gas grub and ghosts. So we're mostly gas and grub at this point. <laughs> but we'll keep ghosts in the title. Yeah. Because uh, we do do paranormal stuff, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we do. But um, nonetheless, we are heading back uh, to the hotel. Yeah. We're probably going to be microwaving some pizza that's left over from dinner. Yeah. Might be frozen. It's been in the back. But I'm excited about a couple things, and one of them that I'm excited about is going over the audio from this, because there yeah. was some interesting things. The spirit box made some sounds. Yes, it, Which definitely. always make sounds, but I mean, it made some sounds that were a little bit out of place. Yeah. Some voices that... Didn't quite sound like radio chatter. Right. Like, you'll hear a radio chatter voice. Yes. Okay? And there's all kinds of different voices on the radio, don't get me wrong. You'll hear a distorted radio chatter voice. It's actually radio chatter, but it'll have static over it, so it's like, ah, something dark, right? Right. When it's really just a DJ coming through barely from another channel. Yeah. But then you will hear clearly these voices at times that just sound really out of place. Yeah, that's right. And they'll just come through very clear for a moment. And there were a couple of instances like that, so I'm looking forward to reviewing that. Yeah. But really, I'm also extremely interested in digging into this this shakedown that we've been doing the paranormal shakedown yeah i'm really interested in going over the audio seeing what kind of leads we may have gotten from that too yeah that's gonna, be, gonna cool. be an interesting case so it's valentine's day uh sunday night Went back to the hotel room last night, got up, and pretty much got on the road immediately. Yeah. Didn't really make a whole lot of stops. 
Mm -mm. Uh, we did stop at Cracker Barrel in Ashland, Virginia to have some Valentine's Day dinner. Yeah. Because Cracker Barrel is like the Valentine's Day hot spot. <laughs> right? Maybe. I guess so. I mean, it is uh, kind of a cool atmosphere. They've got all those like old antique things sitting around and hanging on the walls. And we really do like the, the Cracker Barrel. Like, I guess they call it the Sunday home style chicken. Yeah. It's like breaded you know fried chicken breasts and uh, no bones in them just just the pure white meat and uh, it's wonderful especially dipped with a little bit of honey oh uh, yeah that's some that's some good, good stuff. stuff yeah it really is yeah but it's been uh, two days since we left mm -hmm. so been on the road all this time and quite an adventure yes <laughs> it was cool to get to see some snow a lot get, of snow a lot of snow yeah, you saw some of those fields. Yeah, yeah, there was, I mean, like yeah, up in up in Scranton, it must have been, what, eight inches on the ground? Um, luckily, it wasn't actually on the streets. Um, most of the main streets were clear. The interstates were certainly clear, but uh, then we got a little bit south of Scranton on the way back, and there was, like, one area that it just dumped on, and it was like a foot of snow over there. So that's the most snow we've seen in, like, three years. It's been, you know? been some time. Yeah. Yeah, that's the place for it. That's for sure. Yeah. So, neat to experience. And uh, just an overall good time. Yes. Um, you know, an interesting time going to some of these places and asking some of the questions. And mm -hmm. Once again, like I said, not a whole lot of the investigation on the video here. Yeah. Um, as we just kind of wanted to bring you on the trip with us and then watch out for Paranormal Shakedown coming soon. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, at the end of this video, I'll link the investigation from last night. So at yes. the end of this video, click on that link and you can watch the investigation that we did last night in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Yeah. I want to thank you all for joining us mm -hmm. along this trip. We're looking forward to another one in two weeks. So as far yeah. as Gas Grub and Ghost goes, every other week you should see a Gas Grub and Ghost video pop up on our YouTube channel. Right. Uh, here. But I want to thank you all for joining us. And uh, you all have a great week. Until next time, I'm Jeff. I'm Linda. And remember, there's much more to see in the snow. <laughs> right?